Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the second Sunday of the Blessed Month of Tuts, which is the first Coptic month. And this month we focus on God's love for mankind. We have a very interesting question today in the Gospel. The Gospel came from Luke chapter 10, verses 21 to 28. It's a very powerful Gospel passage. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? When the Lord is tested and asked this question, what shall I do to in inherit eternal life? He answers by saying, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And the lawyer answered him saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and as your neighbor as yourself. And our Lord said to him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. It's not a part of today's gospel passage, but his response is striking. <clears throat> In the next verse, which is not part of today, the lawyer kind of justified himself by saying, and who is my neighbor? That's not the talk for today, but it reminds me that oftentimes I think we're guilty of doing the same thing when we're trying to test God. We come up with various scenarios in our mind. We theorize about this or that, that behavior, that appropriate of behavior or not, based on our own personalized reading of the scripture how do you read it and so we kind of rationalize it what makes sense to me or we maybe use this idea that maybe a certain activity or a certain behavior is not explicitly mentioned in the bible so therefore it must be okay but we have to be reminded that we're not like other denominations with our own personalized way of reading the Bible that only applies to me. As Orthodox Christians, we have God as our father and the church as our mother, which means that we have the teachings of the church. We have her saints that help guide us. So when we try to justify ourselves and justify our sinful actions through specific arguments, I mean, this is hardly attempting to love God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind and all your strength. As a lawyer attempts to put our Lord to the test, he himself is tested. You can't possibly begin to understand loving God with all of yourself and all of your strength until you actualize this love, specifically with your neighbor. The love you desire to have towards God is demonstrated by the actual love that you show to the flesh and blood, the people who are around you. To those who are made in the image and likeness of God. Love becomes a theory if we continually speak about our love. But we don't lift a finger. We don't break a sweat. We don't try to serve or to assist our neighbors. St. Dorotheos of Gaza once said, the more one is united with his neighbor, the more he is united with God. So, in fact, we look at our neighbor as the springboard, as the rocket ship that propels us quickly towards God when we claim to desire well, who we claim to desire with our own hearts. St. Dorotheos goes a bit further, and he gives some practical advice on how we should deal with others. You know how oftentimes people say, I wish that I could be loving to such and such a person, but they're just not loving to me. This is what he wrote. He said, do not ask for love from your neighbor. Do not ask for love from your neighbor. For if you ask and he does not respond, you will be troubled. Instead, show your love for your neighbor and you will be at rest and so will bring your neighbor to love so it is the act of love <clears throat> that kindles love not vice versa and this is reflected in the teachings of our lord when he says if you love me obey my commandments so this is this whole gospel passage today is about action what must i do to to gain eternal life in the book of James, 
our Lord gives us a command. He says, be doers of the word. Be doers of the word. This is in James chapter 1, around verses 22 to verse 27. Be doers of the word. Not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Deceiving yourself. There are people who attend church regularly and read, you know, stacks of books about orthodoxy, about Christianity. Um, they have conversations, hours and hours about the church, and yet they don't put to practice what they've learned. Church attendance is good. Reading and studying is good. Conversations are good. They're great, but they're not sufficient. They're not sufficient. By themselves, they are not enough to make us a faithful Christian. To be a faithful Christian, a follower of Christ, is not only a matter of what you think and what you say, but it matters what you do. It matters what you do. According to the Holy Scripture, it's very clear God judges our actions. He judges our actions. He judges our deeds. This is why we pray in the, in the liturgy, according to your mercy, not according to our deeds. Because if that was true, if we really were judged according to our deeds, what hope would we have? So we pray for his mercy. But God judges our work and the lack of our work. If we're not doing the deeds of a Christian, then I'm sorry, no amount of Bible reading or church attendance is going to save you. It's a hard saying because people can read the Bible and they could be academic. In fact, they could be non-Christians who know the Bible better than us. God doesn't want you to know what you believe with your head. He wants us to know what we believe with our tongue, with our fingers, with our feet, with our whole being. He wants your entire body submitted to him, not just your mind alone. We have very clear examples of this. Let's look at Matthew chapter 25. Our Lord gives us three parables to teach us what judgment will be like. The first parable is the wise and foolish virgins. We should be familiar with this passage. There are ten virgins who are waiting for the marriage supper. There's ten of them. And their virginity is a picture of their purity, of them avoiding sin. But the oil of their lamps is a picture of their good works done through the power of the Holy Spirit. Five of them are well prepared. They have enough oil. They have enough oil in their lamps to make it all the way to the marriage supper. But five of them are foolish, and their oil runs dry. It runs out. Their Christian deeds run out. So when it comes time, just being virgins is not enough. It's not enough to give you the ticket to the supper. They also have to light their burning. They have to light their oil. They have to have their oil burning. This is our good deeds. This is our good works. And they knock on the door and they pound on the door and they say, please let us in. And our Lord says, I don't even know you. Another parable that our Lord gives us in Matthew 25 is the sheep and the goats. The sheep are at his right hand and the goats are on his left. And to the sheep, he says, welcome, you blessed of my father into the kingdom that has been, been prepared for you. For I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. And I was thirsty and you gave me drink. And I was sick and imprisoned and you visited me. And they said, when, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or sick or in prison? And he said, I tell you the truth. And as much as you have done it to the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. In the parable of the sheep and the goats, the only thing that he judges is whether or not they followed what the Lord commands. So we have to go do it. 
The only difference between the sheep and the goats, according to the scriptures, not according to my interpretation, is between what they did and did not do. In Revelations chapter 19, very interesting. Revelations chapter 19. It says in verse 7 and 8, Let us rejoice and exalt and give him glory because the wedding celebration of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. She was permitted to be dressed in bright, clean, fine linen. Now, this is a very popular picture of heaven. A popular vision of heaven that people have in their heads. Of the saints of God dwelling in the presence of God in robes of white. We picture these sparkling, clean, shining white garments. But what are those garments? Where do you get those garments? Can you just go to the store and pick up some of the garments for yourself? No, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 8, it finishes by saying, For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. The fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. If you and I want to wear a beautiful white robe in heaven, that robe is our good deeds. And if we don't have good deeds, then I'm sorry, we're not going to have the robes to wear in heaven. At the beginning of the book of Revelation, our Lord, he sends uh, letters to the churches, to the seven churches. And he calls them to account for how faithful they have been. Some of the churches have been more faithful than others. Some have been very less faithful. Our Lord says different things to each church to kind of correct them and to... But one thing he says is very clear. He says it without exception. To every single church, he says, I know your works. I know your works. And today, in the church here in Chino Hills, our Lord says, I know your works. And sometimes that sounds very comforting to know that he sees what I do in secret, or it sounds very scary to hear. Our Lord says to us in our homes every single day that he is paying attention to the things that we do and the things that we don't do. So it's important for us to show our love in a very practical way. In our families, husbands, do you show love to your wives? Wives, do you show respect and obedience to your husbands? Children, do you obey your parents? In our day-to-day -day lives, do you humble yourself before other people? Or, unfortunately, like me, do you demonstrate pride? Do you guard your eyes and your thoughts? Do you respond to your spouse and children with patience and understanding? Do we give alms? Do we help those who are in need? Are we generous? Generous with our time? Or are we greedy with our time? Do we work hard to pray with our families every single day? It might be impossible, practically speaking, logistically speaking, but are we trying or do we just give up? Do we provide for our families, not only physically, financially, but spiritually, as we're commanded to do in the commandments given to us as a husband, as a father? Do we diligently teach our children everything they need to know about the church? Or do we say, no, 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 that's for, the, that's for Obuna. Are we setting an example in every aspect of our lives? The only way 
that we can be acceptable in God's eyes is for our actions to be in obedience of Christ. There is no way around it. Our Christian faith is demonstrated in the way that we speak to our spouses, the way that we speak to our kids, the way that we diligently teach our children, the way that we clean our homes, the way that we work to provide our families. Are we just taking shortcuts all the time? The way that we generously give to the poor and to the needy. The way that we share the gospel to those who are in need. These are all action words. These are all action words. Your faith is shown in the way that you speak, the way that you teach, the way that you work, the way that you give, the way that you share. These are all action words. It's not enough for us to assess our convictions, what we believe, what we think we believe, but we also have to make an assessment on our, on our actions because our Lord Jesus Christ, he knows our works. He knows your works. He knows my works. So to conclude, in the gospel passage today, we have this lawyer who comes to test Christ and he asks, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What shall I do? Underline do. And it's an excellent question. And I pray that we all have this question every single day. What shall I do today? The problem is, as we see, it wasn't really the question. It was the questioner. So this is a simple way of our Christian faith. To love God with everything that we have. Everything. Everything who we are. To love your neighbors fervently. It's simple, but it's not easy. It's not easy. Why? Because loving others means thinking and living outside of myself. Putting others first. It's not about me. How can I help my parents today? It's not about me, my game time, my time with my friends, my social media time. It's not about that. It's not about the fact that I came home from work and I had a really long day and I'm exhausted. It's not about me. What does my family need of me? Christ himself has given us the example. He has taken each one of us as he has found us, no matter what condition that, he's in, that we are in. And he shows us compassion. He has carried us to a place of healing. He has poured out his mercy on us. In return, he asks us, who have received mercy from him, to pour out Love to those who are in complete need of love. We are encouraged to do and to be love. This is our, our high calling as Christians. This is our high calling as adopted children of the Most High God, the King, the King of Kings. God is love. And he desires us to become love, to make love clear and present. May he give us the courage to take a risk and to have a heart for those who are in need around us. May the Lord give us strength to sacrifice for others and to follow the path of the cross and the path that, has, that he has made very clear to us. And glory be to God forever. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, wherefore he has anointed and sent.